what's going on with Jason? Jason, what are you picking up? Um, a beetle. A beetle. Oh, I thought it was a macon. It's a very small macon. It's a very squished macon. Oh, okay. Oh, really? We'll see you later when we go inside. <laughs> okay, let's go see it. Okay. <laughs> Are you excited for the new Macon? Yeah. Yeah, let's Look, go see right if we need a practical daily. Yeah. So let's go see it. Here it is. Macon. It is. The new uh, 2022 Macon. But this is for a couple of years later, you know, when I actually need it. But right yeah, now. Right now, we don't, have, we don't have money for four back seats. More so. seats, more money. So exactly. we're going to go with a cheaper option. Yeah, and this is, this is the cheaper option right and here. This is the cheaper option. This is the two door Macon. Here it is. Soon we're gonna take the cover off and see it. It's a paint sample color. I don't think I've ever seen a car in this color before. Very cool. Three, two, one, go. Black olive green, I believe. Black wheels, black calipers. It's kind of like a really cool flat green with a cool blue stitch interior with blue seat belts. Very different from any other spec Jason has. Of course, you gotta get manual and you gotta get the carbon buckets. You now, because the color is black, green, and olive, it's got a proper license plate right here. Yeah, he would resell it to kids. Yeah, it's pretty. Such a nice color. I don't think I've ever seen another car in this color. So this week has to get PPF ASAP so we can eat off of it. Yeah, very good stuff.
just about to talk about how unique the spec and the colors on this car. And then there's a Tacoma with the exact same freaking color. You're very original, Jason. Just picture that thing towing this thing. PTS Tacoma. Okay, so we just drove the car to a regular kind of hangout spot. But before we go in and get some food, I'm going to show you around the car, show you the options. It's pretty cool uh, spec on this car. First off, the most distinctive, distinctive thing about this car is, of course, the color. This car is, is in paint to sample black olive, whereas most people just option with a sharp blue, black, white, just simple colors. You have to wait a lot longer and you have to get a certain type of allocation to be able to get paint to sample, and this car has it. Also has black rims with the black um, brake calipers, but it's not carbon ceramics. Obviously, you have to replace carbon ceramics, it's gonna cost you a fortune. These, the only problem is they're gonna squeak like crazy, but you know, you gotta pay to play. And this car doesn't have options like the carbon fiber roof or the carbon fiber mirrors because honestly, when you pay for paint to sample, it's a lot of money and you don't really want to take away from that color. You kind of want to show off that color as much as possible. Here you also have the clear tail lights, And because this car is in black olive, you have the olive view plate, kind of matches the car. And I really actually like the wing on the new GT3s. Obviously the touring is a clean look, but this, is more of an aggressive wing than the 0.2 or the 0.1 GT3s and 991s had. Oh wait, and a cycle fan headlights, nice. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for the, for the outside of the car. The only other thing is the PDLS headlights, which are the best headlights you can get on the car. But now let's move to the inside, where it gets to something that you're not expecting as much. It's hard to kind of think of a color that's gonna match the green on the outside for the inside. But this is something I wouldn't have thought of, but it actually works really, really well with the color of the car. So shark blue, pretty much everything on the interior. So you have the shark blue stitching on the door and also the shark blue seat belt. Now, when you go inside, there's all the carbon trim here and in the middle. And with the 992 is the first kind of GT car you can get with a full kind of digital display. So it looks a lot more modern. Obviously, you've got to get used to it. Hopefully it ages as well as the other one did. Now, unfortunately, there's some things that you got in the other car that you don't get in this one. The old GT3s felt a lot more special because instead of a regular door handle, they had a strap kind of like my car has, and you just pull the strap to open the door, makes it feel like more of an aggressive car. You still get the same carbon bucket seats as you used to get in the old gen. Also, this has the sharp blue GT3 emblem. But what I did notice actually is, it looks like the cushioning here is a little bit softer and just a little bit nicer and more refined. But now, this one is a six-speed manual. Of course, I think it's a lot more fun than manual. I think if you get one of these cars, you've got to option with a manual and with the carbon bucket seats. And you actually have functional cup holders in this because in the old ones, you really didn't. You had two cup holders in the middle that were very iffy. Here you have one perfect one in the middle and another more steady one right there. But another disadvantage now, obviously times are changing. So when you open the compartment here, you no longer have a regular USB. You only have USB-C which kind of sucks because most people just have the USB cable, so now you're just gonna go out and buy a new one. This one has the carbon door cells. Unfortunately, not illuminated, but how often you're really gonna look at it anyways, only when the door is open. I always recommend get the winter mats because you really don't have to worry about getting the car messy on the inside. Just get in and out of it like a regular car. Don't have to feel guilty about anything like that. But yeah, this is kind of the overall spec of the car. I personally really like it. I think it's very different from any other GT3 that people have done. Most people have been getting the new ones in like kind of lighter colors. So this is a good change. And yeah, and I hope soon Jason's gonna get the wing PPF'd. We can use this for a dinner table because otherwise why not you get the touring? So another thing is the key's different. If you know your Porsches, you'll notice this one's a little bit thinner here, but it's a little bit wider. And yeah, it just looks a little bit more modern. And also Jason has this kind of dinosaur keychain. But yeah, let's start it up and see what it sounds like. Now obviously this is a brand new car. We literally picked it up half an hour ago, so 39 kilometers on the clock. We drove about 10 kilometers to get here from the dealership. And you have the new Porsche screen, completely new design. 911s before kind of had the more analog look to them. This is the first one with a more digital look. And here they kind of change where you have your suspension buttons and your exhaust buttons and your lift even. So. The exhaust is actually on the screen, we just gotta wait for it to load. A little bit slow. Yeah, it's not working. Well, I guess, I guess we gotta stay quiet. Also, I don't know if it's just because it's not broken in or not, but 
this feels a lot more like kind of stiff. It's not as loose and easy to move as at least my GT4. Yeah, look at the couple of, the couple that pops out here, and it just you still get a proper cup holder even with the one that pops out. But you also get the really good one right here. And we will be right back as soon as the screen decides to load.